What's up, Psycho Drag? You have clicked on the right video. You know what we do here. We're always on a quest to find you the coolest motorcycles, the coolest stories and people we can possibly find. Well, today we found a gem, so kick those feet up and relax because we're here, Scotts Valley, California. This is Motorcycle Concourse by Moto Nexus, and it is all for a good cause. There are some incredible dirt bikes here, vintage Japanese, 100% stalkers and things that you're just not going to believe. Let's take a walk around and get this party started and check out some of these awesome bikes. Well, let's get right into it. You know what we love. We love that New York steak. Here's the 1975 Kawasaki Z1900 finally restored. We have a whole vintage section because check it out, guys. Here is the Kawasaki Z1R. There's no mistaking that styling. That's right, guys. By the late 70s, the performance war was on when it comes to these Japanese superbikes. And check it out. There's no mistaking this very futuristic rectangular fairing on the Kawasaki Z1R. This one in 1978. Hey, good to see you guys. What are your names? Peter and Roxanne. Where are you from? Monterey. I see. And what do we have here? We got the Monterey Mini Bike Gang. Ah, shout out, guys. Thanks for being here and watching Cycle Drag. Beautiful. 16 different classes here competing. We've got over 150 motorcycles. Concourse is the main class, bone stock, and this one will be a threat because look at it. This one even has the original air box, and that's what the collectors will tell you. It's only original once. Yes, we love performance. We love speed. We love modding them out, but you're talking about a motorcycle from the year 1978. If you have any memories of this machine, please leave it down below. Cause you know they're only original once they're only stock once so many gems here check out the old honda 450 we got two strokes here as well how about the yamaha daytona special 400 cc and then the legendary kenny roberts bike not the kenny rogers bike we've talked about that one before this one actually does have a little custom work here in the engine it looks cool with the accents that's for sure this is one of the most legendary and iconic two strokes of all time what a great livery by yamaha it is the kenny roberts rz350 you want to talk about legendary two strokes can't forget this guy over here yes we talk so much about the h2 but don't forget about the h1 500 Mach 3. These things continue to get more and more collectible, just like the H2. Oh, okay, yeah. 1974 Kawasaki H1 500, the triple. Three carburetors, three cylinders, three pistons, three exhaust chambers. Certainly an awesome bike and a piece of history, guys. We're just getting started. Let's keep rolling. 1966 Honda Dream. Sir, did I just hear you say this is your first motorcycle? I had one similar. Ah, uh, that's what it's very all similar. about. It was my very first bike. Sweet memories, huh? Ah, goes way back. Yeah. I love it. Who's this lovely lady that you have with Good you? Good friend of mine, Stacy. Isn't it nice to see him reminisce? <laughs> Nothing is. better, huh? And you know, that's so cool. Just like we talk about at Meekum, that is what drives this market. Nostalgia. Was it a bike you had when you were younger? Was it a bike you wanted when you were younger? It is so cool that, I'll tell you, these, these vintage motorcycle shows, they just get bigger and bigger. In a moment, we're going to talk to Clay Baker of Moto Nexus. He's going to give us some more information about how this is all for a good cause. And there's some really impressive bikes here that I got to tell you about that as we continue on through this broadcast, uh, we got some we got some pretty impressive stories custom bikes race bikes yeah we got plenty of those take a look guys there are some hill climbers here too very special guest that i want to tell you about look at these machines is this thing look at this wild crazy machine the small bore drag bike one of my all-time favorite liveries, the Kawasaki GPZ. This is the GPZ 550 bone stock, beautiful bike. Great selection of dirt bikes here as well. Some of them still ridden. Some of them no longer have gas in the tank. They're just to look at. They're just for posterity. And we appreciate all different levels of this hobby, of this sport. How about this old school Yamaha 490? This one caught my eye from afar. I think we got some bull tacos over there that are pretty impressive as well. I think Chris Carter's here from Motion Pro as well. We're going to talk to him in a little bit. But right now, these guys reminiscing over this Yamaha 125 1969. Sweet, sweet memories. Yeah, you want to talk about bringing back childhood memories. This was before my time but 
I get it guys, I totally do. Mini bikes becoming much, much more collectible. We see tons of them at Meekum, especially the, the Honda 50 and the legendary Honda Trail 70. Oh my gosh, how about the Honda three-wheeler? You remember these things? These things were wild. How many of you got one of these under the Christmas tree from Santa Claus? Now I'm sure you can share some stories down below, but from what I understand, there's a very good reason why Honda does not make that three-wheeler anymore. One of the more dangerous motorcycles of its time, but it's cool that they live on here. And if you're a fan of the triple, what do you think about this monster? Six cylinder, one, two, three, four, five, six, Honda CBX Super Sport. This one, 1979. This thing is gorgeous. I gotta ride one of these one day. I have never been on them. Didn't sell well, believe it or not, back in the late 70s. It was kind of overkill, but boy, they certainly are collectible now. Well, Cycle Drag, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Clay Baker, Moto Nexus. Put it right here for me. Man, thank you so much for having me. I, again, am just astounded because I've never been to Scotts Valley. The amount of top-notch, pristine motorcycles I'm seeing here blows my mind. It's amazing. I mean, this is like, this is Concord quality bikes coming out to just have a good time on a Sunday afternoon. Very you know, cool. Yeah. Now, talking about how the show is all for a good cause, how did it come together and what does it benefit? Yeah, so uh, my partner, and this is Robbie Cadwallader, he's a former racer, and well, actually he's still racing land speed. He wanted to do something for the community. There was already a music festival that was happening out here. So we thought, well, let's combine a bike show because we're all into bikes and we know a lot of people with a lot of bikes, too many, and that we would do something really affordable, which would attract people who've already spent a lot of money to go to other big shows in the area. Yeah, because it's Motor Week, you know, all over Monterey and the peninsula. So this show's 30 bucks and we're bringing... Guys. Whoa, there you go. <laughs> You're getting a fire up right behind you. How about that? Chopper class even, I see. Right behind us. We got the... Yeah, you can hear the chopper coming to life. I can talk over it. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to my world. As soon as you do an interview, somebody fires up a motorcycle. Good thing we love motorcycles. We do. We the love motorcycles. All motorcycles. Awesome. We love Harleys and all the Japanese bikes. It doesn't matter where it's built. If it's a bike with two or three wheels, we love it. That's yeah. right. That's so right. So the uh, the charity that we're benefiting here is Music in Schools. This has been going on for 15 years with the Scotts Valley Kiwanis Club, and. The Music in Schools program buys instruments and music and all the funding that's necessary to keep music in the middle school and the high school here in Scotts Valley. Good stuff. And yeah. what a great selection. 16 different classes, everything from bone stock to complete custom. What's your impression of this show compared to everything else that you see? Oh, wow. Uh, this show is bigger than last year. We had 100 bikes last year. We've got 130 out here this year. And the quality is incredible. We are blown away. The majority of people, I think about, it was 92% drove more than 40 miles to get here. We got people who came up from Oceanside and from Reno and down from Ukiah. So they're coming from all over to do a show for a good cause, but man, it's just a lot of fun. It is, it is. It's just I a love kick, it. you know? Well, again, thank you so much for having yeah. me. I appreciate the heck out of it. Moto yeah. Nexus, something we gotta tell people about too. They Moto Nexus, you wanna auction your bike? without paying a bunch of fees and you want it up fast, motonexus.com. Check it out, guys. And we still got a lot more to see. We got a lot of stories to tell over here, don't we? You do. And this Japanese class this year is massive. And I just had a former quail judge telling me the quality is higher and the number of bikes larger. Oh, yeah, a little, a little burn there, a little burn. Let's go check it out. <laughs> let's go check it out. What in the heck is this? Well, we got a lot of stories to tell, but this one stopped me in my tracks. Keith, good to see you, man. Uh, I know it's a Honda 550 engine. What in the heck am I looking at here? Okay, so this is the Holy Bike. The Holy Bike? The Holy Bike. It's a Honda 550 engine, 550 holes I drilled in it. Ah, from the swing arm. So that's why it's holy. It's not... Right. 
religious no, only. It's, it's not at all. Okay. And there's in the swing arm, the frame, the side cover has the most beautiful hole. Check uh, we'll out. check it out for sure. And, uh, and it's all done on air ride suspension, on level ride air ride suspension. What inspired you to build a bike like this? There's a guy in Morgan Hill. His name is uh, Jeff Jones, Rat Ride Jeff. He builds the most incredible rat rods. And he had a, a car that the interior is tuck and roll copper. And I saw that at a show and I was like, I don't want to build a motorcycle like that. And I've, I've taken this to him. He just loves it. What's it like to ride? How's it perform? It's beautiful. It's um, no U turn, but you know, uh, it's, it's like I said, it's on an air ride suspension. Uh, it's very smooth. It's good. Oh my, what was the hardest part of the build for you? Um, probably just, uh, it took a long time three, three years. I just wanted to take it out and show people what, see, what people thought of it. Well, guys, we told you you would see it all. Here's one like you'll never see again. Thank you so much. Great uh, bike, man. Thank you. Wow, is that awesome? Well, let's hear, let's hear the holy bike. Let's hear it. Uh oh. Oh, hang on, I gotta turn the gas on. One of a kind, Keith, one of a kind. If you are Victoria Rayburn. What do we got? Show me. Well, yeah, this might not be food. That's it. So this is my bag. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's okay. That's okay. It's the holy bike. It is the holy bike. It's children. We've done that before. We got the small bore cafe two stroke 1967 Wards Benelli. We got to focus in on on these bikes, guys, because they are very popular out here. They actually have a ride for them. Well, you know we love two strokes. We love the small bore bikes and 1967 Wards Benelli. What is your name, sir? I'm Gil Norman. Gil, nice to meet you. Put it here, Gil. In uh, this area, you were telling me that you guys have a special ride with these bikes. Tell me about it. Yes, there's a guy named Barry Porter who uh -huh. owns that bike over there, uh -huh. and he puts it on. Usually visited by between 30 and 50. Bikes. It's called the Moto. Very De cool. De California. How many miles do you go? Like seven hundred. Like three. Days. What? Seven hundred on this little? <laughs> where? First off, where'd you get this '67 Wards Benelli? I bought that in Loomis, uh -huh. California, uh -huh. and I rode last year on the Moto Giro. That same bike, but in a 125. Okay. And I enjoyed the ride so much that I sourced that uh, on uh, Facebook. And then I went and snagged it like two days after that ride. And then I spent this time, you know, doing that too. That's what I love about the motorcycle community is we're all broken off into these little niches. We all love two wheels, but some guys like the two strokes. Some guys like the four strokes. Some guys like the super small bore bikes, the vintage bikes. And this is definitely really, really cool. The million dollar question I have for you is can we hear it? Sure. Let's go. Here we go. Let's see if this baby fires up. 19. 67 Wards Benelli small bore Whoa That was easy A little little motor Yes he did miles on this you're you're making me guilty man I go 100 on my busa and my back hurts 700 miles he rode on this machine guys not yet, not yet. you're going to though only has 400 miles on it. all right 400 miles on it he's gonna go 700 right, miles well, you gotta make sure it's not gonna fall. how many days will that take Three days. Three days. Okay, not bad. Beautiful bike. Thanks so much for showing us, guys. My pleasure. Nice How to How about that? Here's the true gauge of what is an En Vogue motorcycle event, too. Look at all the cool bikes in the parking lot. Look at all the people that have rode in for this. Here you go, old school chopper fans, right next to the legendary Honda CB1100F. More modern bikes, the Harley Davidson. Little mix of everything out here. Another Honda Adventure bike. Great event here, Harley Davidson bagger.
it rode in from all over the moto guzzi's here the triumph speed twin is here another triumph over here but this parking lot just jammed with cool bikes the bmw over there the dr gotta love it what a great event and this is what i say all the time guys and this is why i really value having this outlet because no matter where i'm at in the country or where i'm at in the world there is somebody somebody from this community this brotherhood who bonds together and that's what this day is all about it's about the passion of two wheels it's about helping out for a good cause we got to find the owner of this Kawasaki H1 500 too because the ladies are loving it. What an awesome old school two stroke. We are having a great time today at the Scotts Valley Motorcycle Show. We got to say hello to these lovely ladies. And I think we've answered the question. The lovely ladies love two strokes because they found a two stroke over here. Uh, Ma'am, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Amber. Amber, and who do we have over here? Hi, I'm Gina. Gina, Amber and Gina, where are you guys from? I'm from Salinas, California. Oh, not too far away. And how about you? I live in Carmel, California. Very cool. So right now you're looking at a piece of history. This is a Kawasaki H1 500, 1974. I'm guessing long before your time, certainly before my time. Um, what do you girls uh, love most about this show? What I love most about the show is the diversity in bikes and everybody's here to come together as a community. Very, very cool. And how about you? What is it that attracted you to this particular show? Um, the uniqueness. You see some stuff here that you won't see anywhere else. It's pretty cool. And you guys are certainly dressed for the occasion. I got to give you a big shout out out here in the sun. What, what is your uh, function today? I hear you're going to be handing out some awards perhaps? We are and we're pretty glad that we are not judging because it would be very hard to pick the winners here today, but we will get to distribute the trophies. Well, that is very nice of you. And, uh, uh, furthermore, I understand both of you are riders. Very, very cool. What do you ride? Uh, I ride a Beta off-road and I ride a GS 1250 on the street. Oh, you got great taste. How about you? What do you ride? I just ride off-road and I ride Yamahas. Cool. Very cool. Thank you so much for being a part of this. We really appreciate it and all for a good cause today, right? Awesome. Thank you very much, ladies. Do appreciate it. Well, I was there yet. Hate to hear that. I was racing a Ferrari down along East Cliff on one of these and almost killed myself going over a bridge. And it went over the bridge and all of a sudden started going towards the mailbox and barely pulled it. I'm glad you made it, my friend. I'm glad you made it. He's still here. <laughs> Got my man Frank here. Frank, nice to meet you. You got the showstopper, the 74 H1 500. Even the ladies are checking it out. Yeah, there. they love it. How long have you had this bike? I've only had it for about a year. Okay. Yeah. What made you get this? Uh, some guy in Craigslist put that thing up. Uh, it was painted British Racing Green, uh -huh. but it was all restored 20 years ago. Okay. And I took it and I... I took the tank and, and had it painted the factory colors, and that's about all I've done to it. Did you have one when you were younger? What I is was it? an RD guy. I, rode, I had a Yamaha DS7250 that I bought off Randy Mamola. He was a pro racer that raced with Kenny Roberts. I bought it from his garage when he was 17 years old. Redwood City Yamaha gave him the bike, and I beat the hell out of it. I always wanted to get another two-stroke. Do you get to ride this thing much? Or? Oh, yeah. Okay, I so it's it. not just for show. I live in Saratoga, so I ride it up to uh, Alice's and up Highway 9 all the time. That's what we're talking about. you got to be careful on these old old triples, huh? It goes nope. a lot faster than it stops, that's for sure. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people like to upgrade the brakes for good reason because they are snappy and they are quick. Yeah, you just got to be aware. You know, just take your time. It's a 1974 bike. So. Well, thanks so much for hey, showing us. You. really do appreciate it, guys. All Piece right. of history. Right. H1, 500. Not all the things that you would expect that kind of I see that uh, it's got some notable stuff on it. I recognize the layout. Found another Kawasaki H2750 over here, guys. Remember, it's only original once. So while some are storm, some leave them alone, and that includes not even wiping them off, not even cleaning them. I talked about how there's there's so many different appetites, there's so much different taste, and there's so many different schools of thought. Take a look here. They want to preserve this bike just as it was, and they're not even going to polish it. It all depends on what you want, what you believe in. Some guys do the frame off restoration. Some guys just leave them alone. I'll never forget when I was at Meekum a few years ago, they had a panel, and they asked uh, Scooter Kaiser of the Antique Motorcycle Museum. They asked him, they said, what do you do if you get a dent in the tank? Do you repaint it, get reproduction, or leave it alone? He said, leave it alone. That's what a lot of people say when it's only original once. But it all really comes down to personal preference. But you know, what I have learned from going to these shows, my prevailing thought is it all comes down to personal 
preference because you know we're only we're only here on earth for so long these things are meant to enjoy enjoy with our friends so do with do what you want with these bikes if you want it to be original for posterity let it be original if you want to do a frame off resto do that if you want to put a bunch of mods on it do that whatever makes you happy that's what it's all about that's what this channel is all about making you happy and letting you live vicariously through me through all of my travels and everywhere I go so if you do like this content make sure you smash subscribe because we do this quite a bit check out this rear find 1967 Suzuki TC 250 gotta love the old-school Suzuki sir what is your name over here my name's Tony nice to meet you Tony Tony tell me the story with this old-school Suzuki so I was working uh, up in the mountains here Santa Cruz and uh, I was working and I, it was sitting beside somebody's house and I was looking at it and the guy asked me if I wanted it and I said yeah I'll take it <laughs> then I had to check first with my wife of course uh, and uh, yes, she okayed yes, me yes. and uh, so it was uh ended up being a COVID restoration is what it was I love it I so love yeah it. it was a beautiful project thing runs like a champ Whoa. pretty peppy for 250. Hey, is there any way we can hear this great motorcycle yeah we'll fire it up I'd love to hear before before we do that I want to give a shout out to the lovely wife over yeah, here thank you so much Hi. for letting him do it we appreciate what's your name michelle that you're an awesome wife thank, thank you. you so you love motorcycles too i'm starting to yes finally <laughs> good yeah, stuff because of him all right well let's hear some noise you didn't bring this one to sturgis did you, Were you oh no i rode the harley that's that, good that, i'd like to see more bikes like this in sturgis that i love the diversity in motorcycles i love my harleys i love my baggers but i love these here we go guys 1967 whoa <laughs> Sounds good, but it smells even better. That's AMS oil. Ah, thank you, AMS oil. Gotta love AMS oil. <laughs> really nice motorcycle. Thank you so much for showing me. Yeah, I'm glad I can show it. Thank you. I'm loving this GPZ. Apparently the ladies are too. You like this one as well? Absolutely. All right. They love their old Kawasaki's. Good stuff. I'll tell you, these judges are going to have their work cut out for them today. Moto Nexus. What a show. Well, big shout out to my man over here with the NHRA hat. I should have known that this was your Z1 and also your Z1R drag bike guy. They go hand in hand, right? I work, I work for the Safety Safari. Oh, you work for that. Well, thank you for what you do. You <laughs> save a lot of lives out there. What is your name? Trace. Trace, very nice to meet you. I'm really, really impressed with your vintage Japanese bikes. Tell me a little bit about the Z1 and the Z1R. Let's start with this Z1R. This thing's amazing. Tell me about it. Well, I restored it about 15 years ago. I bought it brand new uh, in 79. I've ridden it across country twice. And, oh, uh, how many days does that take? It took a few days. I was say, that's uh, impressive. I did from here to Colorado Springs in one shot. I'll never do that again. <laughs> Couldn't walk upright for a while. Um, but I just, I, I love them. I've had three of them, so I won that I still drag race. Uh, in fact, we'll be running next weekend in Sonoma. Oh, very cool. And then um, one that uh, was on a show, on a show circuit, so I won quail or second place at quail so well what i will say about your cross-country trips i got a couple boosts i also have a 77 kz 1000 i think the 77 kz 1000 is a more comfortable bike but cross-country i would miss things like modern electronics well, and braking I, I did that and back suspension in, uh, i did that back in the late 70s early 80s okay i did that uh you know being as old as i am now i don't know it took me a week. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hey, I give I give you maximum credit. I don't know if I could do it. Now, right next to it, another showstopper, the '75 Z1. Where did that thing come from, and how much did you do to it? Uh, a friend of mine had it. Lives actually not too far from here, and he has two of them. And I restored the other one. Then he wanted to get this one done, but this one had been sitting outside for 20 years here in Santa Cruz. Wow. And it was. It was it was good, but um, with enough um, work and we got it all cleaned up and down to the bare nothings and new zinc, new chrome, new paint, new everything. 
and um, he's riding the snot out of it. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love it. Well, let me ask you this, because you it sounds like we got a lot in common. You're a drag racing guy. You still drag race one of these. Back in the day, we know what everybody did. They did the same thing my dad did. They ripped the exhaust system off. They ripped the air box off. They modded them out for the drag strip. Now what we're seeing is everybody wants them exactly how they came from the factory. Yours is, is bone stock. Uh, did you have to wrestle with resto rod versus bone stock? Uh, yeah, we'll say bone stock. It's, well, some, not, it's not quite bone stock. That's a, I won't tell you what. I won't say what's <laughs> this. I, I'll go on a record. Sam Wills is building one, and I give him a lot of credit. He's building a 73Z1. He won't use Wiseco pistons. He won't use MTC pistons. Every component inside has got to be bone stock. To me, that's that's taking it to a whole different level. I say build your engine. How are you going to build your well, engine? That, well, that's the way the 900 is. But the Z1R, it's got over 70,000 miles on it. It's... It's a little tweaked inside. Sure, sure. But I mean, were you were you tempted to throw a Kirker on it? Were you tempted? I to... bought it from the dealer with the Kirker on it. The, the dealers were offering with Kirkers on it. I've got a couple more exhaust systems for it at home, um, but it just it sounds so much better with the Kirker on it. And I can't tell you how many pipes I threw away for those 900s. I got it probably threw away six or eight sets of those because we were putting Kirkers on. Nobody wanted those pipes. <laughs> it is a beautiful motorcycle. Thank you so much for showing me. Before I let you go, quickly if we could, craziest thing you have ever seen, top end work and safety safari. Oh God, I'm not supposed to talk about that oh. stuff. <laughs> All right. Like that, hey, prayers go out to John Force. Let's hope he's oh, okay, yeah, huh? Yeah. I was in, were you in Virginia? I wasn't in Virginia. Oh, gosh, I was in Virginia. Prayers prayers to John Force. He's one tough guy. I know he'll be back. So I'm sure you've seen lots of crashes, lots of people on fire, but you've saved a lot of lives. So thank you very much, my friend, and nice bikes. Thank you. Original key fob. How old is that key fob? <laughs> Since 1975. Nice. Awesome. Wow, 1975. He bought it new and then sold it to somebody and then bought it back from the guy and then it got parked. Uh, well, it's a piece of history and it's gorgeous. Nice bike. Thank you. Oh, check that out. What do we have? What year is that? 1977. 19 long before you, I'm sure. How did you end up with this beauty? Uh, I was sitting in a barn in Tahoe for the, since 1999. The last time it was registered, I picked it up for about 800 bucks. Very cool. How about, do the ladies think a 1977 mini bike is cool? <laughs> I do, I do, I do think it's cool. Awesome, guys. Except I, for the, you know, all the leaks that it leaks into the garage. Ah, uh, the, the fume. The fumes can be a little tough, huh? Yeah. We'll work on it. Good stuff, guys. 1972 BMW, amazing bike. All right, a BMW like I've never seen before. Sir, what is your name? Scott Tebow. Scott, nice to meet you. Tebow, no relation to Tim Tebow. No, okay. no relation to Tim Tebow. No relation to Tim Tebow, shout out. Hey, anyways, tell me about this awesome BMW, 72 BMW? Yeah, so the bike started out as a 72 R75 slash five. It was a toaster tank bike. Uh, it's been completely stripped down and rebuilt, uh, race spec, full, full thousand cc bike, uh, custom titanium, everything in the top end, push rods, valves, lifters, uh, balanced crank to a lightened flywheel, five speed transmission, uh, modern suspension, front to back, Rembo race, big rotors on this thing. It is a serious machine uh, that is built for racing that we'll never see any other than maybe a living room lap or two. <laughs> In his in his house, so it's never been ridden. Never been ridden. All right. uh, we've run the motor. We know it runs really strong and great. But he wants this to be a zero mile bike sit that, to sit in his collection. Well, you know, it, I'm glad you bring that up because we we're talking about how we're all kind of off on these different little fractured niches of this great hobby that yeah. some people don't even believe in wiping the dirt off. They want them that original. Sure. Some people believe on putting 10,000 miles a year on these things. With your school of thought here, is there any temptation to ride it? I know with all those performance parts, it's probably got to be hard to not try it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's this thing is made to ride on the track and made to put down some serious lap times. And, I, you know, I've tried convincing him to ride it. And I think there's a chance that at least I will get to put a couple of miles on this bike before it goes home with him. But he's really looking at it as a collection, like a piece of sculpture, a work of art. And so he wanted it to be, you know, never have gas in the tank, never have oil in the engine. He just wanted to have this 
sit in his living room and be a piece of art. So, you know, he's paying the bills. And so uh, we're gonna, that's we're gonna let him have whatever he would like. That's the deciding factor. Well, thank yeah. you so much yeah, for showing us. And sure. guys, let him know, yes or no in the comments, should they ride this bike at one point? I know I'd like to ride it, but I don't want the bill for it. So yeah. thanks so much for showing us. Gorgeous 1972 Honda 754. And I gotta tell you, I saw the ladies moments ago and I, and I thought they were gonna win best dress, but we might have a new candidate for, for best dress. Look at this outfit, very, very impressive. What is Thank your name, you. ma'am? My name's Jory. Nice to meet you, where are you from? I'm from Scotts Valley. So what brought you out here? Uh vintage bikes and looking for a photo shoot so thank you for doing this that is me. very cool you come out looking for a photo shoot what is your all-time favorite motorcycle Ooh. oh man that one's a tough one but i gotta say my 88 honda shadow has my heart honestly so you're a honda girl I for sure girl. what do you think about this piece of history over oh, here the, the paint job is just gorgeous i love the speckled sparkles it is beautiful yeah, yeah. well thank you so much and, and be careful these guys are going to be hitting you up for photo shoots left and right I found the owner of that legendary CB750 that was attracting even the attention of the ladies. So congratulations. What is your name, sir? Give me a pound over here. Dave Baker. Dave, nice to meet you. Uh, the CB750, such an iconic bike. Many believe it started the sport bike trend, started the performance inline four-cylinder trend. When did you get this bike and what's your impression of it? I bought this bike about two years ago. It came out of Colorado from the second owner and uh, someone loved this bike because it was an incredible, as you can see, original condition, which it still is. And I, I ride the bike a fair amount. Uh, but I bought a brand new CD750 in my 18th birthday in 1974 and uh, sold it to buy my first house. So I've wanted another one ever since and have been looking for a long time for one in this condition. Nostalgia. Pretty, pretty happy to have it. It's what drives the market. Thank you so much for showing us, guys. Piece of history. Without the CB, there wouldn't be the Z1. It paved the way for the New York stake, the Z1, but we had to get this 750 out of the way first. When you have a cool Honda CB like this, you get a little bit of attention from the ladies. This young lady absolutely loves that 1972 Honda CB. You know, without this, there would be no Kawasaki Z1. The New York Stake, that was all designed to one-up this Honda CB 750cc machine. The performance sport bike wars were on back in the early 70s, and that rivalry was just red hot between Kawasaki and Honda. And right now, this lovely lady from Scotts Valley, California area is taking advantage of doing some pinup shots. She picked out her favorite bike, and her favorite one here is this orange 72 Honda CB750. And I know that's got to make the owner very proud. Very happy she picked your bike as her favorite. There you go. She likes metal flake. She does like metal flake. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful motorcycle, guys. Piece of history. The Honda 754. Got to love it. Speaking of old Hondas, if you love them, look at these fine restorations here. We got the Honda 350 and also the Honda Super Sport 4 back here as well. Beautiful bike. Let's take a look over here. Gosh, is this thing gorgeous or what? Look at this. Look at this restoration. Long live these vintage Hondas. All right, who remembers the beautiful Honda CL350? Here is one restored to another 10 out of 10, my friend. Don, you got to tell me what you did to this one. Well, this one is a total frame-up restoration. So everything on here is pretty much new old stock. And uh, this is a late 1969 CL350. They built uh, CL350s from 68 until 1973. And they built about 624,000 CL350s, including CBs and SLs. Something really special for you today, motorcycle fans. Take a look at this 1977 Honda Super Sport. Yeah, we just finished the restoration on this one, and uh, it's the last year of the 400F uh, 408 CC engine. Wow! And it's their effort to produce at the factory a cafe racer bike. So it was. It had lower handlebars. It had. Uh, pegs that are further back. Um, these are actually mounted on the swing arm. Uh -huh. and so I, that was this, what they were looking for in the bike. And uh, all of the super sports are highly collectible now. Uh -huh. There's not a lot of them left. No, and, and incredibly rare. Almost none of them in this, this kind of condition. 
When we restored this bike, it took us about two to three months, I think. Wow, you're fast, two to three months. Basically, well, the, the thing with this particular bike was it was it was in excellent condition before we did the, our own restoration on it. So it was like a eight out of 10 bike. And we bring them up to 10 out of 10 bikes. I would say so. So they're, when we get done, they're basically 100 point show bikes. Beautiful and, uh, motorcycle. Yeah, Gotta it's, love a, it, guys. it's a lot of fun to ride. A lot of fun to ride. I bet it is. Take a look, guys. It is a beautiful restoration. Don, thank you so much for showing us. Oh, you want to talk about a piece of history? Here's one we got to showcase as promised. It is the 1934 hill climb machine piece of history. Here we have the legendary Mr. Chris Carter of Motion Pro. Thanks for being here. Love Motion Pro. Love your products. Absolutely. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this piece of history? Sure. Well, you know, here in Northern California, there's a local dealer and also a well-known racer. His name is Sam Marine. This was his personal bike, 45 cubic inch VL, 1934. And this bike has been touched for well over 40 years, maybe 50 years. And uh, I was lucky enough to now have it to pass on to somebody else someday. So it's got a lot of neat features to it for an old bike, a you know, racing bike. Um, it runs on alcohol, special cylinder heads. And uh, this is what, this was, men were men when they rode these things. I was going to say, yeah, this doesn't have some of the luxuries that we're used to today, no, huh? that's for, So it's a pretty neat piece of history. Well, thank you for bringing it out. What's going on with Motion Pro? Anything new we can expect? Yeah, we're always working on new things. Yeah, we got uh, always come out with new products every year and uh, just keep staying after, you know, just celebrate our 40th year in business. But it's never been a lot, of, a lot of work. It's always been a lot of fun. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Oh, we've even got a flyover for this event. How cool is that? That is awesome. Clay, you did it all, man. This you did is our it all. Show. <laughs> Wow, very cool. Anytime you get a flyover, I think you put on a good event. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. You can't have a bike show without a flyover. Well, there you go, the special flyby by the Watsonville Air Force. All right, guys, it is now time for awards, so stay with us because we're going to hand out some of this hardware. And I'll tell you what, these judges have some difficult decisions to make. Let's see who wins. Stand by your bikes. We will bring you up one by one. 1958 Harley Hummer taking it home. Congratulations. Congratulations. It belongs to Sheila. 58 Harley Hummer taking home an award. Congratulations. That is your winner in the American class here today. It is an interesting 65 Royal Enfield taking the win in the British category. Great job. Winning the British category. 1930 Miller taking the win in the Italian category over here. Beautiful bike. Take a look. 1930. Great job. Big win. 1930 Miller. And I'm thinking there's a BMW R90S with his lovely granddaughter is gonna take the win in the German category. Very cool. Another worthy winner. Two wins for him. What class is this, Clay? Japanese. Japanese class. No surprise the CBX brought home an award. Two for him today. Different uh, color schemes the red with the black, they made a silver. I think, the shirt the makes a whole lot more sense now. Oh, Mr. Tebow like originally came from got BMW the win. As a road motorcycle. Very cool. Congratulations, taking a win in custom modified. Great job! Great job. How about our winner in competition road racing? It is this vintage Ducati. Congratulations, your 65 Ducati take it home a trophy. We got a land speed category too, and this is one of my favorite bikes. Wow! I had a feeling you were going to win today. Congratulations! Designs that are on that bike, and if you look at the and Johnny can't stop about riding that. Great bike! Great bike! Robbie, what size engine is that again? 100 cc. How? What year? 2002 Kawasaki. That is an awesome bike. Thank you so much. Congratulations. 76 KTM MC400. Ah, 76 KTM, your winner in competition motocross here today. Loving it. Beautiful bike. Congratulations. Finally restored KTM. Congratulations. 1969 Yamaha taking the win in the Enduro class. Nice bike. Congratulations.
73 Montessa Coda 247. 73 Montessa Trials bike. Oh, yeah. This is the Trials class, too. I told you it's neat that they have so many different categories here. Congratulations. You won the Trials class. Thank you. Very Thank nice you. bike. Davidson XR 1972 Harley XR 750 taking the win in flat track. Congratulations! Thank beautiful, you, you. beautiful you motorcycle, iconic piece of history. Ah, we even got an electric category 2024 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 0. Yeah, it was running, believe it or not, guys. Like them or not, electric yeah, okay, bikes are is. here, guys. That's for sure. We're gonna see a lot more of them moving forward, too. Congratulations, big win the electric category. Ladies, we asked you, do you love two strokes? You said yes. Do you love electric bikes too? Absolutely. Oh, we love them all. Good stuff. Only available in France and parts of Europe, they're saying? And Japan. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. How many do you think are left? Oh, very, very few. Very few. It's rare, ladies. Congratulations. He's taking a win. And how about my man Chris Carter going to take the win in the barn find category? Smart move to take the chains off, too, to move, move it around. Congratulations, Chris. He's leaving with a trophy. Well deserved. That is the man behind Motion Pro. I've been using Motion Pro since I was a kid. If you've ever used Motion Pro, let us know about it down below in the comments. Oh, and here we go, guys. Best of show. 1949 Indian. Absolutely spotless. What a motorcycle to take the win here today at Scotts Valley. Absolutely beautiful. 1949 Indian guys. It was known for these three lights up here. And Jason Hartz, we got to talk to you for a second. Congratulations. All these outstanding motorcycles here, and you won best to show, sir. What does this mean to you? It means a lot. This is what a great show. What a great day. This is this is awesome. This is just awesome. Oh, you you earned it, my friend. Congratulations. Congratulations. Let's give you a look one more time. This is your best of show. 1949 Indian. Because this thing will feed back and they know this could be possible without the collective. And I have a special award for these guys. It's to go up at the office here in Scotts Valley. Guys, thank you so Scotts much. Valley PD. And hey, I thanks think a lot, Scotts Valley PD. So, Appreciate you guys. Thank you thanks so a much. lot. How about it? 1986 Honda Interceptor 500 over here. Love this bike. It is a bona fide rider. Mike Van Linden, our very knowledgeable announcer today. Thank you for being here, sir. I know you've been to a lot of different shows. What was your impression of what you saw today? Like a lot of these shows, the variety. It was everything from land speed record bikes to mini bikes to folding mini bikes. Um, bikes I'd never seen before. It was just wonderful to see. Um, I, I, the list is too long to involve, I'm afraid. But uh, it's just a wonderful day. Great people. Super bikes. That's, that's my big takeaway is I didn't, I didn't plan on seeing a collection this eclectic, this diverse, yes. and I think that makes a great show when you have so many different disciplines and so many different years. Heck, we, we saw a 2024 win, we saw bikes back in the 30s win, they had a little bit of something for everybody. Hill climber, we had road bikes, we had custom road race type bikes, uh, a CBX, yes. you don't see oh, that yeah. many don't, these days. Don't see them. Um, and so it's great to see some of these bikes being brought out, and I know some of them have been sitting for a long time, but for this show, they kind of buffed them out and brought them, it's wonderful to see. They went to a lot of effort to, to display and great to acknowledge them. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Mike. We appreciate it. Have a great day. Yeah. Uh, you want a picture with these folks? Thanks or? for making it up, Jack. Yes. Hold on one second. like a Z1, huh? Nothing like Let's hear that again. What was that? What'd you say, sir? I watch your show all well, the time. Well, thank you very much. In honor of that, can I hear one more compression release? Oh, goodness. Good engine braking there. What do you think, guys? We having a good time today? Yes, we are. Good to see you out here in California. You ever notice how every two-stroke sounds just a little bit different? So cool.
We got a 1977 Yamaha 400. Now, sir, before you kick it, I got to say, pressure's on because you dogged that guy over there. You said your oh, start's know, first kick. Oh, you got the pro taper bars. I like yeah, that. Yeah, make a little dirt bike. Very cool. Yeah, dirt bike style. Beautiful motorcycle. What type of exhaust? It's uh, problem. definitely something. They're, they're directly up. Aftermarket. Let's see if we can start this, baby. Hey! Well, sir. You said first kick, you weren't kidding. What's your name? Todd. Todd, where are you from? Uh, Boulder Creek. Actually, originally from Santa Clara, it's down the valley. Nice to meet you. Man. Nice to meet you. Take care. He's out of here, guys. Let us know your thoughts on that wild two stroke. We've got the bikers from Christ here. Thank you guys so much. Bikers for Christ. Thank you. Santa Cruz, bikers for Christ. You guys are awesome. Motorcycles, music, sunshine, and a great day for a great cause. I like that combination. Hey, what's your name? Scotty. And Jill. where are you from? Santa Cruz. Uh, Illinois. Uh, wow, Santa Cruz now. You watch Cycle Drag? Yes, I do. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I love it. Yeah, I love, I love the videos too, bro. Thank you. You're in the video now. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, as if this facility wasn't cool enough, they've got a BMX track right here. Surprised somebody didn't bring one of those little motocross bikes over here to have some fun. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Well, how does he load the holy bike? Wait, do you see this? I thought he came in a trailer. What in the? Well, when you got a bike that's completely custom, 750 it, pounds. I guess you need a unique way to load this 750 pound holy Honda. Never really rains out here on the west coast, so he doesn't have to worry about that going home. Doesn't need an enclosed trailer. That tilt bed's nice. The holy Honda. 750 pounds. That's the air ride down. When's your next show? Next weekend, Alviso. Okay. Alviso, California. Is Fantastic that a, show. Is that a big one? Fantastic. Very cool, man. Well, awesome bike. Thanks for showing us. It is the Holy Honda. Got a lot of attention here today. Well, Clay, this was such an awesome experience. Behind you right there, best of show. Congratulations. What are your final thoughts on what was a really, really successful day that surpassed oh, wow. my expectations? Oh, yeah. The, first of all, we had 30% more bikes. We had 130 bikes on the field this year, 100 last year. The quality was unbelievable. Uh, you know, we welcome anything you want to bring out, whether it's new or old, barn fine, you know, project bike, whatever. But the quality this year was really fantastic, Jack. We, we saw concourse bikes out here. I had quail judges coming up and saying, wow. You know, just they couldn't believe it, especially in the Japanese class. And the other European and Italian classes had some phenomenal bikes. Yes, they did. Stuff I've never seen. I mean, some of the Japanese bikes, that, was, that had to be the hardest class to judge because of the volume, but also the quality was so high that the winner in that class won by half a point. Very, very impressive. And I imagine we're going to do this again next year, aren't oh, we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we have no insight. Thank you so much Thanks for so having much. me out. Guys, Moto Nexus, that's what you want to check out. Clay, you're the man. I really appreciate it. Guys, it was all for a good cause. I hope you really enjoyed this. Leave your thoughts down below. What was your favorite motorcycle that you saw? What motorcycle do you wish you would have seen here? Thank you so much for watching. You know this is what we do. We go on a journey. We travel the world to find you the coolest bikes, coolest people, and coolest events. And all you got to do to come along is smash subscribe. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you like this video, here's another one for you. Subscribe right in the middle. And you know if there's anything fast or classic motorcycles from Scotts Valley, California. Cycle drag. Rolls on.